A well-designed WSDL definition is typically built from various individual document modules. It is useful to define the abstract definitions in a separate file so that they can be imported by many concrete bindings. It's quite common to keep the XML schema type definitions in one file. The WSDL abstract definitions, messages and port types in another file and the WSDL concrete binding information, bindings and services in yet another file, all linked together through the WSDL import element. In this demonstration, we'll cover several oxygen features useful for developing WSDL modules. Content completion assistant, outline view, master file support, and search and refactoring actions. We'll start with the development of a set of WSDL modules to describe the following operations offered by a stock trading web server. Get the last trade price of a stock. Generate a report that contains the trade price for a stock for a period of time. And validate a set of reports that contain history for a stock price. The implementation of this system is stored in the following files. An XML schema which holds the information that defines a stock quote an XML schema which defines the format of a stock quote report that contain the fluctuation of a stock trade price, a WSDL module which defines the messages and port types for requested web server operations, another WSDL file which defines the binding and service for the operation used for getting the last price for a given stock, and another WSDL file which defines the binding and service for the operation used for generating a report with price fluctuation for a given stock. For our demonstration, we have prepared a test project, which contains all the resources described earlier. Now let's open the stock quote report service wisdom module and try to define a binding for the port type which declares the operation that generates the report. Note that after we open the wisdom module, the outline view was populated with components from the imported modules. For example, the stock quote report SOAP port type for which we want to define the binding is defined in stock quote operations with the module. Also, the outline view presents the components defined in the referred XML schema resources. Now, let's define the requested binding. Using the content completion assistant, we insert the whistle binding element and set the name attribute to stack quote report soap. When we edit the type attribute, the content completion assistant proposes all the port types that are defined in the imported modules. Also, when we edit the value of the attribute name, the Content Completion Assistant presents the operation that is defined in the referred port type. With the help offered by the Content Completion Assistant, we finish the definition of the binding. In the same way, we create the WSDL service for previously defined binding. Next, we'll deal with some problems commonly found when developing WSDL modules. For example, we'll navigate to the definition of get trade price report operation. Hold the control key and click the operation reference. Next, we want to rename the get trade price report operation by changing the case of the first letter. Similarly, we rename the second operation. If we validate the module, it turns out to be valid. This is because the scope of the validation is limited to the current file only. However, the operations which were renamed are referred in both WSDL master files, stack quote report service and stack quote service, which become invalid because they refer components which are no longer defined. This is the main reason why a module should be edited in a broader context. To help developers accomplish this, starting with version 15, Oxygen implemented the WSDL master file support. A master file generally means the root of an import include tree of modules. The master files are defined at project level and are automatically used by Oxygen to determine the context for several operations such as validation, content completion, refactoring, or search. To enable the master file support, press the enable button in the project view. 
The application displays an information dialog which allows us to determine the possible master files and set them as such. Here we choose to detect the possible master files for XML schema and WSDL resources. After the detection is complete, Oxygen presents a tree with a hierarchy of the files from the project. On the first level, we have the possible master files, which are the WSDL modules that are not imported or included by other resources. Note that the stack quote report.xsd resource is also proposed as a possible master file. This is because this document is the root of the XML schema's hierarchy. We set all three files as master files. Note that the imported included WSDL files are marked as modules. The tooltip displays information about the resource type, its location, and the master files set for this resource. In the last wizard page, you can preview the master files that will be added in your project. Oxygen added the selected resources in the master files folder from the project view. So far, we've seen how we can detect and set the master files to define the WSDL editing context. Next, we'll see how Oxygen helps you edit a WSDL module in the context defined by their master files. The first thing we notice is that now the module is marked as invalid because it is validated in the context of the master files previously set. When a module is validated, Oxygen will automatically identify the master files which include that module and validate all of them. Let's correct the errors from both master files and go back to the module to perform another validation. Now the module is valid because both master files are valid. Another benefit of the master file support is the ability to search and refactor WSDL components. Search and refactoring actions like search references or rename components operate in the scope defined by the current module's master files. Now let's inspect the XML schema element that defines the structure of the message sent to the server to get the last price for a stack. Note that the request contains an element that defines the ticker symbol. To find this declaration, we use the search declaration action from the Quick Assist helper. Use component dependencies action from the contextual menu to see where the element is used. If we want to rename this element to stack symbol, we can use the rename component action from the Quick Assist helper. When previewing the modifications, we can see that the element was renamed in all XML schemas and WSDL documents where it is referred from. And this concludes our demonstration. Thanks for watching.